Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, we're going to do something that's not normally done on this channel. Surprisingly, we're going to look at macOS. Now, this is still a Linux focused channel, but the thing is, a lot of system administrators out there, they use a MacBook as their daily driver. And for those of you that do use a MacBook as your daily driver and also manage Linux servers, I wanted to create this video right here to count down 13 applications that you can install on macOS to benefit you as a Linux system administrator. As an aside, I have no idea why I chose 13 as the number of applications that I'm going to show you, but I found 13 apps, so I figured I would give you all of them. Anyway, I recently acquired a MacBook for my secondary computer, and while I was using it, I decided to throw this list together because I found a number of utilities and applications that I figured would be useful for you guys. But before we get to the list, I need to let you guys know that I have two brand new courses available over on Udemy. First, if you're in the process of learning Linux for the very first time, you should definitely check out my Linux Essentials course. Not only will this course teach you everything you need to know to get started and learn the basics of Linux, it's also going to help you get certified and earn your Linux Essentials credential through LPI. And the Linux Professional Institute is the world's largest Linux and open source focused vendor neutral certification body so by earning certifications through LPI, your credentials will be recognized around the world. But even if you don't have any interest in getting certified, this course is still a great fit for those of you that are getting started with Linux because it'll teach you all the basics. Also, I recently released an Ansible course as well, which will teach you everything you need to know to get up and running with Ansible. Ansible is one of, if not the most popular configuration and automation platforms in the Linux ecosystem, so it's definitely something that you need to learn. Ansible is a powerful and easy to learn platform that'll enable you to automate even the most complicated Linux administration tasks. And just like with my Linux course, each lesson will break down even the most complicated components and concepts into easy to understand lessons. And by the end of the course, you'll learn everything that you need to know to use Ansible as part of your daily tool set. So support Linux learning and check out my courses over on Udemy and I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, it's time to get to my list. So let's do exactly that right now. First, Alacrity. Alacrity is a terminal emulator that's available for a variety of platforms, including macOS. If you do any kind of system administration or DevOps work, then Alacrity is a very basic terminal that stays out of your way while you work. There's no upsell, there's no pro version, what you see is what you get. Now to be fair, Alacrity doesn't really give you anything you didn't already have on macOS. In fact, Macs have a built-in terminal app that works perfectly fine for the same use cases you'd normally use Alacrity for. Also, in order to configure Alacrity, you have to edit a config file, so it is a bit more time consuming to set up. However, it's worth it, and I see both of the cons that I just mentioned as benefits. Sure, Alacrity is more simplistic than even the built-in terminal, but that simplicity also means that there's no distractions. Since I use Tmux for just about everything within my terminals, any extra features a terminal emulator may have are just features I'll end up ignoring anyway. There's another benefit of Alacrity though, which is also going to be true of several applications on my list. It's cross-platform. Being cross-platform means that you could use Alacrity on Windows and Linux as well, so if you do switch between operating systems, you can have the same terminal app on each. But definitely check out Alacrity. It's a small download and I highly recommend it. The next app on my list is Termius. It's also a terminal emulator, but unlike Alacrity, it's more of a premium product, whereas Alacrity is more simplistic. Termius is more than just a terminal emulator though. It excels at handling multiple sessions and syncing your configured servers between multiple computers. It's really easy to use and it can make managing multiple servers a breeze. However, the downside here is that Termius is not fully free. Some of the features are locked behind a paywall. There's four different plans available, ranging from free all the way up to $30 a month. So this might be a great app if your employer is willing to pay for it, but if not, a free solution like Alacrity would probably be good enough. The next app on my list is Firefox. To be fair, having a web browser on a list like this is probably pretty boring, and if you feel that way, then I agree. But Firefox is important to mention on this list though, because it does correct the most egregious problem when it comes to Safari. Firefox is multi-platform. Don't get me wrong, Safari is a good browser, but you can only use it on Apple products. 
If you use other operating systems like Windows or Linux, then you have to use a different browser on those platforms, which means Safari users won't have any way of syncing their information between the platforms. But when it comes to Firefox, most Linux distributions ship with Firefox by default. So by using Firefox on your Mac, then you're going to have the same browsing experience as you do on Linux and Windows, complete with data being fully synced between each operating system. But even if you're not a Linux user, I recommend that every Mac user ditch Safari. Literally all of Safari's competition is multi-platform, so it just doesn't make sense to use a browser that's not cross-platform in 2024. Now, an honorable mention here is Thunderbird, which is obviously not a web browser, but it does come from the same source, and if you're looking for a good email client, then I highly recommend it. Next up, we have Raspberry Pi Imager. When it comes to creating bootable media for a Raspberry Pi, the official tool is the best that I've seen, and yes, it's available on macOS. When you open it, you could choose from multiple images, ranging from Raspberry Pi OS to images that cater to more specific use cases, such as sharing media. Now, there's not a whole lot I could say about Raspberry Pi Imager. It does one job. It converts SD cards into bootable media for Raspberry Pi boards. But it is a great tool, so if you do use a Raspberry Pi, then I highly recommend that you have this installed. The next tool on my list is breaking a rule, but it does help solve a very legitimate problem. And that problem is the fact that updates on macOS and the way they're handled, it's a complete mess. And the reason for this is that there are several places you have to check for updates when it comes to macOS. When it comes to operating system updates, you go into system settings and check there. If you want to look for updates for anything you've installed from the App Store, you have to open the App Store. And then you have apps that you might have installed in your applications folder, and those might update regularly, if you're lucky. Like I said, it's a mess. And that's why I added Mac Updater to my list. It makes updating apps on macOS less of a headache. To be fair though, it doesn't completely solve this problem, but it does make it a great deal easier. Mac Updater will give you the ability to scan your installed apps and look for updates, and it also gives you the ability to install the updates right there in the interface. In addition, there's a service you can install that'll regularly scan your apps for updates and let you know if any are available. Now there's two downsides to Mac Updater though. First, it can't update everything. Sometimes an app might not cooperate with it. This is rare, but it can happen. For example, if you have Steam installed, it shows up as a manual update, meaning Mac Updater can't handle it for you and you have to update it yourself. But it does at least let you know that an update is available, so there's that. The second downside is that Mac Updater is not free. Well, there is a free version available, but it's practically useless. To get any real benefit out of the app, it'll set you back a strangely specific $8.97. So you'll have to decide if an app that can update other apps 85% of the time is worth the change. Next, Standard Notes. And this is one of my favorites. As a matter of fact, I've reviewed it on the channel recently. Standard Notes is a note-taking app, and it's great for administrators for taking notes during meetings and documenting infrastructure. It's also encrypted, which is what makes it perfect for those of you that plan on using this for work. And since Standard Notes is cross-platform, you can seek your notes between all of your devices so you don't have to keep track of where you saved your notes. Now, there's not a whole lot I could say about Standard Notes that I didn't already mention during my review, so if you're curious, then check out my review, and I'll leave a card for that right about here. A runner-up in this category is Obsidian, which is another great note-taking app that a lot of system administrators like. But unfortunately, Standard Notes is open source and Obsidian isn't, so it automatically loses to Standard Notes since open source is always preferred when we can have it. But even if you take licensing out of the equation, I still prefer Standard Notes over Obsidian. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you can check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time. So it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the video. Next, MacVim. 
MacVim is a great choice if you want a simple text editor, since it gives you all the capabilities of Vim. In fact, MacVim is Vim. It's literally Vim in a window. And this is really cool because regardless of whether you're working in a terminal or within macOS, you can have this same Vim setup. So definitely give MacVim a try if you're a Linux user like me. And if you want to learn how to use Vim itself, then check out my free course here on YouTube that'll teach you everything you need to know. And I'll leave a card for that playlist right about here. Next, Parallels Desktop. Parallels Desktop is a virtualization solution that's primarily marketed as a means by which you could run Windows on Mac, which is legitimately something that it can do. But the reason why it's on my list is because Parallels Desktop has outstanding Linux support. In fact, on my M3 MacBook, Linux virtual machines run so well that someone sitting next to me wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. And that's also true when I'm using a heavier desktop environment such as GNOME. In fact, it runs so well that it's a little strange. Now, as great as Parallels is, there are some downsides. First, the cost. It's easily the most expensive app on this entire list, and depending on which license you decide to buy, it could set you back up to 120 US dollars. And to make matters worse, you have to pay for it every year. But personally, I think it is worth the cost considering how great it works. Also, if you do decide to cancel Parallels, make sure you cancel it thoroughly. Parallels will make every attempt to renew your license unless you cancel. Downsides aside, the performance of Parallels makes running Linux on Mac far less of a compromise than it used to be. Next up, SyncThing. Definitely wanted to mention SyncThing because it's my favorite syncing solution. It makes syncing files between devices a breeze. For example, you can sync your documents directory on your Mac to the documents directory on your Linux rig and vice versa. Windows too. It does take a bit of manual setup to get it working, but once you do, it's great. It's not that hard to set up though, and I do have a tutorial on my channel. It's quite old, but it should still work. So if you want to check that out, feel free and set up SyncThing. I highly recommend it. The best thing about SyncThing is that it's basically a set it and forget it solution. It updates itself and silently syncs your files in the background. So if you wanted to have your documents directory on your Mac mirror the documents directory on your Linux workstation, for example, SyncThing is a great way to get that done. And since it's a bi-directional sync, it doesn't matter which device you're using at any given time. Now keep in mind, SyncThing is not a backup solution, but if you want to have the same files on each of your devices, then SyncThing is my preferred choice. Next, let's talk about Bitwarden. Bitwarden is awesome. As far as password managers go, it checks all the boxes. It syncs your passwords between devices, has strong encryption, and you could even self-host Bitwarden if you want to. And considering that Bitwarden is a cross-platform solution, it doesn't matter which operating system you use, regardless if you're running macOS, Windows, Linux, it just doesn't matter. You can sync your passwords between devices seamlessly. I definitely recommend giving Bitwarden a try. It's a superb password manager, supports the latest security features, such as time-based one-time passwords, pass keys, secure notes, and more. And best of all, it's free. Next. When it comes to managing to-dos, Todoist is my favorite application. In fact, I've been using it for years. I use it to keep track of all kinds of things, such as videos that I'm working on, things that I need to get done, whether it's personal or work-related. Todoist is my one-stop application to keep track of everything that I need to get done. Another feature that's pretty cool is you could also selectively make a project a Kanban board if you want to, depending on the project. There's a lot of features, and I highly recommend it. Now, there's not a whole lot I could say about a to-do app. It's pretty basic. But anyway, I highly recommend that you check it out. Continuing, another Mac app that I could definitely recommend is AutoMounter. AutoMounter is a great tool for those of you that use network-attached storage. With AutoMounter, you can make sure that network shares stay mounted and remount if you temporarily lose connectivity. Now, macOS does let you auto-mount shares to an extent, but I found that it doesn't really work well. With AutoMounter, you can install a service that can run in the background, continually making sure both your Samba and NFS shares are mounted where they need to be. It would be nice if macOS did a better job with this, but here we are. Now, the downside is that there is a free version, but you will need to buy it if you want to get any real benefit from it, in my opinion. But at around 14 US dollars, it's not going to bankrupt you. And finally, Home Assistant. And specifically, I'm talking about the app for macOS. If you have a Home Assistant server of some sort, 
the app is a really good one to use for having quick access to all of your controls. Home Assistant is a great home automation platform of its own, and for those of you that aren't aware of it, I highly recommend it. If you do already use Home Assistant, then having the app installed on macOS just makes it even better. And there's our video. I hope you enjoyed this list of Linux-related apps for macOS users. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Definitely subscribe to Learn Linux TV if you haven't already done so. To get subscribed and see the latest in Linux, I would really appreciate that. Either way, I'll see you in the next video.